Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Way Milan Group. I am Attorney Tsai. I'm together with my co-worker, Mr. Forrest. So uh, the title for this video is uh, Should I Apply EB1 or NIW and why? Let's look, uh, think of this and, and, and use a hypothetical situation. Uh, let's assume I'm from Brazil. I have 500 citations on Google Scholar page. I'm a postdoc at a U.S. university. Um, I have a good record of reviews and publications. And, but the query I have is, should I apply NIW or EB1A? Okay, yeah, very good question. And indeed, we encounter such questions more and more often now because there's a trade-off, pros and cons. So as Dan just mentioned, you know, as for a researcher from Brazil or say from France, Turkey, Nepal, uh, Japan, Korea, anywhere other than China and India, they are facing this choice. Why? Because uh, simply NIW or national interest waiver is easier to approve than EB1 or alien of extraordinary ability. On the other hand, if you apply NIW instead of EB1, there's a longer waiting time. As of now, it's about one and a half years. In other words, well, if you apply US green card through EB1, you may receive the green card one and a half years earlier or one and a half years shorter waiting time, then go through the NIW category. So then, well, why should I apply NIW other than EB1? Well, simply because, as I mentioned earlier, NIW is easier to approve, or EB1 is more difficult to approve. If you apply NIW, well, there's higher possibility that your case can be approved smoothly. Well, of course, you know, apply EB1 is better. But other than what we want, what we desire, we also need to consider what is probable, what is likely to be accomplished. So that's why some people will choose to apply EB1 based on their specific background and situation. For example, some applicants, maybe their visa will expire soon and they have to apply EB1 to address the visa status issue for themselves and the family members. Well, other applicants, maybe they are in a stable research position with stable funding sources. Uh, well, they can wait. So they can have different choices. Uh, some may choose to apply EB1 and others may choose to apply NIW. And also, as we discussed, this also depends on the background. Some have stronger background. Uh, you know, people will need to make different choices. And are there other choices? Yes. So you can combine them. Well, instead of choose to apply only EB1 or only NIW, well, there's no restriction saying that you cannot apply both. So you can prepare and file both. And our law firm, New Way Ming Law Group, we can help you prepare and apply both. Of course, this will take more time and energy, you know, for us to prepare. Uh, but overall, the duration in preparation stage should be similar. And it will cost a little more for you in both the governmental fee and the legal fee, but it may well worth it. So it's just like people have different appetite for like risk. You know, some may choose to purchase additional insurance. So say your background may be borderline for EB1. Okay. Or you can apply EB1, but you want to be sure. You want to have a safety net, you can apply both EB1 and NIW. In this way, you can have the advantage of both category. So I remember there's one other question. Yeah, I have another question, which is really important and clients need to focus on this significantly is, what do I need to pull together? What are the resources I need to provide to the firm uh, in order to prepare a successful petition? What kind of information do I need to pull together? Yeah. Thank you. So, so uh, it's pretty simple. Well, there are three major types of documents that you need to come up with. One is, as a researcher, your original research records, such as 
reprints of your publications, like your journal papers, and uh, your citation records. And uh, if you have served as a reviewer, well, your judge of others' works, the history, documentary proof for that, uh, scientific track record for your qualification. That's the first. The second is a list of scholars who can sign, provide recommendation letters for you. So this can be your PI or other experts in your field, other professors, scholars, researchers, or postdocs. You know, it can be both from academia or industry. So you do not have to have many recommendation letters. Two, three, or four recommendation letters are usually good enough. And you can provide us the name of the scholars who can sign the recommendation letters and their website or their CV. So that's the second. And the third is like a summary of research, like your research statement, research summary based on your accomplishment. So this is similar to a research proposal that you write for funding. The difference is the research proposal you write it's mainly about something you are going to do. Okay. So for green card application, for the research statement, you focus on what you have already done, your past accomplishments. And that needs to be supported by documentary evidence. So what do I write in the research statement? Well, usually like uh, uh, why I conduct the research, what's the importance of it? And what's the challenge, difficulty? why the problem was not solved in the past. And then, well, through what approach did I address the issue, like uh, developed new method, discovered a new phenomenon, or corrected past mistakes, answered questions like this. And finally, uh, objective evidence. So after I accomplished this work, I published new papers, they got cited, they got coded and reported in scientific media, and uh, they have been implemented in real work uh, by in the industry, well, commercialized like this. So again, overall, well, you need to provide three items. One is your uh, scientific background, documentary evidence. And the second is a list of scholars who can sign recommendation letters for you. They do not have to be all independent. You know, maybe you can have some of them as independent referees. Others can be people who collaborated with you. And finally, a research summary. So we can provide samples and instructions for the research summary. And because many of our co-workers have scientific background and we have many years experience working with scientists, researchers, we can understand your work. We provide the sample and you will know it when you see it. So these are the overall documents that you need to uh, provide to us. Other than that, uh, there's not that much work and we will do most of the work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So contact us if you have additional questions.